So when we're talking about the angels, the Prophet ﷺ was asked particularly on the night of Al Isra wal Mi'raj. You know, there were some people that questioned that journey, how he made that journey. There are some people that just wanted to know what it was like. And a group of companions came to the Prophet ﷺ and they asked the Messenger وسلم, <clears throat> what did it sound like? You know, what did you see and what did it sound like? I mean, as you're traveling through these galaxies with rapid speed, what is it that you heard out there? And the Messenger وسلم, <clears throat> he says, Inni ara ma la taron. He says, look, I see things that you are incapable of seeing. And I hear things that you are incapable of hearing. He says, Inna samaa attat. Said the heavens are creaking. Attat means they are shaking violently. And there's a reason why the sound of it is like it's shaking violently. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, because there isn't a space of four fingers except that there is an angel that, is, that has been created in prostration to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is doing nothing but declaring his praises. So he described the sound of vibration, okay? I want you just to listen quickly to what it sounds like in outer space. NASA actually had a recording from outer, outer space they put up 16 years ago, right before the turn of the millennium. And the name of the research was, our universe is not silent. Because there was this idea that if you went out to outer space, you wouldn't hear anything except for the moving objects. Just listen to what it sounds like in outer space. Obviously, you know, that's good enough. You guys can't hear everything. Um, but if you get a chance to listen to it, it's actually quite breathtaking. And actually one of the researchers who published that research said that it sounds like a billion men doing Gregorian chants all simultaneously at the same time. SubhanAllah. When I heard that, I remember this hadith of the Messenger SallAllahu Alaihi Wasallam. Inni ara ma la taron wa asma'u ma la tasma'un. Look, I see things that you don't see and I hear things that you don't hear. And that's a sign of hope for us as well because we're always paranoid about jinn being everywhere and shayateen being everywhere. The number of angels compared to the number of jinn is dramatically different. There's a huge difference between how many angels there are, are out there and how many jinn and devils there are out there. So this is a magnificent creation, the malaika. They, you know, belief in them is the second pillar of our faith. And subhanAllah, Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he says the reason why it's the second pillar of our faith is because of Jibreel alayhi salam. Because the only reason, for example, we don't necessarily have, well, we have to believe in the jinn, but it's not necessarily a pillar of faith, right? Can you be a believer without believing in the jinn? No, you can't. It's in the Quran, Surah Al-Jinn. But it's not a separate category of the pillars of faith. The reason being that all of the pillars of faith have to do with the integrity of the message. And so the reason why a pillar of faith, there's a separate pillar of faith of belief in the Malaika is because of this angel Jibreel alayhi salam that brings the message to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So it clarifies the integrity of the Messenger to the Messenger which helps us fully appreciate this message as well. And obviously, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us many things about these angels. And the thing is, is that it's in every culture and every theology, you have some form of belief in the angels, right? In Judeo-Christian thought, you have a belief in, in the angels as being a, a, cre a creation that, you know, can make mistakes. They've been reduced to fallibility. They can fall. So you have a concept of dark angels, Lucifer, the devil. And in fact, they don't actually separately believe in a category of jinn. They're simply demons and dark angels. So they do have that category. They do have that belief. And within Christianity, you'll find many different beliefs about who the specific angels are and what their roles are. So for example, in Mormonism, Gabriel is Nuh He's actually Noah, right? So you'll find different beliefs as to who they are within Christianity and within Judaism. You'll find that uh, in, Ju in Judeo-Christian thought as well, the angels are created from fire. Whereas the Prophet ﷺ told us they're created from what? From light. And that excludes all forms of impurity. And as Suyuti rahimahullah says, Allah chose to create them from the most beautiful creation, which is light, because that is, the, that is what He chose to create His hijab from, His veil. As the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah speaks from behind a veil of light. 
So it's the most beautiful creation and it excludes all forms of impurity. And it's a testimony to their infallibility. Now, do they have physical presences as well? Do they have a physical presence or are they just light, right? They do have a physical presence and they have a, a pretty dominating physical presence, right? And, you know, a lot of times when you see portrayals of angels, because, again, you'll find them even in, in, in the thought of Confucius, there's a belief in angels. Even the pagans of Mecca believed in angels, but they called them what? Banatul Rahman, the daughters of the most merciful. So if you looked up a Wikipedia entry of Gabriel, for example, and you saw the portrayal, right, and you see the portrayal of most angels in, in, you know, in drawings and in sculpture, you'll find that they look like babies in diapers, right? They're very weak, small creatures. Right? Whereas the portrayal that we find in our religion is that this is a strong creation, a huge creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that do as they are commanded, that exclude all forms of fault, all forms of flaw, all forms of impurity. Just as we testify that the messengers of God, all of them, Abraham, Noah, Jesus, Moses, David, peace be upon them all, just as we testify that they are all infallible, and that they do not commit those, those mistakes. The angels as well are completely infallible and do not disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with anything that's been given to them. As Allah tells us in the Quran, لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم ويفعلون ما يؤمنون That they do not disobey a single command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They do exactly as they are told. However, do they love certain things? Do they hate certain things? Do they have characters? Yes, they do. They're not robots, right? So you'll find numerous narrations which talk about what offends the angels and what causes them to come near. Arguments or, or debates amongst the angels, the angels of mercy and the angels of punishment. And Jibreel alayhi salam as well, having a character. Now what do they look like? All right, Allah tells us they do have wings, not those two little weak uh, feathery wings that you see. They do have wings. Uli ajniha, mathna wa thulatha wa ruba'a. Some of them have two wings. Some of them have three wings, some of them have four wings. Yazidu fil khalqi ma yasha. And Allah increases them as He wills. Now, that automatically tells us that they're of different sizes. But what would an average angel look like? Just an average malak. All right? To give you an idea of just an average angel, uh, Safwan ibn Sulaym radiallahu ta'ala anhu he narrates that ma salla ahad, no one enters into his salah. This is just you praying in your room thinking that no one's around you, thinking that you're all alone. Except that there are angels the size of mountains that are praying there with you. You think you're in your room all by yourself. You've got angels, creatures the size of mountains that are there praying with you, that are there glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with you. All right, what about an angel that has a bigger task then? An angel that, that, you know, that belongs to a more elite group of angels. How about Hamalat al-Arsh, the bearers of the throne, right? We mentioned them in our supplications. Allahumma inni asbahtu ushiduk wa ushidu Hamalat al-Arshik. You know, we, we call them to bear witness at times. Allah praises this group of angels. What do they look like? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, I've been given permission to tell you about just one of those angels. One of the angels who bears the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, إِنَّمَا بَيْنَ الشَّحْمَةِ أُذُنِهِ إِلَىٰ عَاتِقِهِ مَسِيرَةُ سَبْعِمِئَةِ عَامِ He said, the distance between his earlobe and his shoulder is a journey of 700 years. That's just from here to here. And the narration of Ibn Khuzayma, the Prophet ﷺ said, a bird could fly that journey in 700 years. So it's not just you walking and taking breaks. If a bird just was flying continuously for 700 years, he'd only make it from here to here on one of those angels. So how do we even determine who's a bigger angel and who's a smaller angel? And what does this have to do with Jibreel alayhi salam? And Imam al-Suyuti rahimahullah says, the greater the task the angel has been given, the greater the size of the angel. So that tells you right away that Jibreel alayhi salam is even bigger than that. He's the biggest of the angels and the greatest in size because he has the greatest of tasks.